Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today we're going to talk about locking groups and components. So at this point, we've talked about groups and components. Uh, anybody who's watching these Square One videos knows that once you create your raw geometry, you should put it into a component or group because that uh, kind of isolates that geometry from other geometry. It allows you to assign attributes and tags, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's what you should do. But there are certain situations where you don't want to let that geometry change, and that's where locking comes into play. Let's hop in and take a look at how that works right now. All right, so I made some geometry here. I made this thing, call it a base, and then uh, some pieces on top. Maybe this is a modern chess set. I don't know, something like that. Uh, but I wanted to be able to look at some geometry and how locking works. So let's start... It's very simple. I'm going to grab one of these cylinders and to lock something like this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say lock. Locking an item, as far as appearance, it's exactly the same unless you select it. Then it shows up in the locked color as opposed to the standard group color, which would be blue and then locked is red. These colors, of course, are changeable in your presets, but as a default, blue is a standard group or component, and red is a locked group or component. You'll notice in the entity info up here, if I switch between a locked and unlocked item, the unlocked item, I could change the tag, I could input an instance name, uh, I can mess with type, I can change the toggles. If I pick the locked one, though, almost everything there grays out. The only thing that doesn't gray out is the lock toggle, because, of course, you have to be able to unlock locked items, and doing so, will return it to its normal state. Now, I just wanna make one, we're gonna mostly work with groups here, but I do wanna make a comment on components. So Sumele here is not a group, she is a component. And of course with components, when you make a change to one, it's reflected in all of them. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and grab Sumele and use my move tool with my modifier key option on Mac, control on Windows to make a copy. If I lock one copy, one instance of Sumele, it does not ripple through and lock others. This is just a note. Um, it will kind of keep you on your toes because if I have a uh, locked Sumele and I try to edit the unlocked Sumele, it will pop up and say, oh, hold on, you're trying to mess with a, a component, one of which is locked, what do you want to do? Do you want to make this one unique from the others? Do you want to unlock all or do you want to cancel this attempt? So hitting unlock all, of course, is going to unlock all the Sumeles and uh, allow me to edit them. All right, that's enough components. Let's talk some more about why you might use a command like this. All right, so in here, if I was to zoom in, if I was, I was playing around with this, these pieces, and maybe there's a group here, this is, this is where I run into, ooh, maybe I should have, have used lock there, is uh, maybe I have a group of these, these pieces I wanna slide over. So I'm gonna grab these ones right here, I'm gonna click on move, and I'm gonna move this over like, Whoop, whoop, whoop. the floor is going with it. When I did that group select, I grabbed the ground underneath. I didn't see it because I was zoomed in tight. This is a big part of, of why you might want to use this tool. If in that same instance, I select and lock, okay, my, my ground's locked. Now if I zoom in here and I do another group select and I go to move it, I'm just moving it, the ground stays where it is, because even though it's selected, it won't move because it's locked. Same goes for the eraser tool. So I'm gonna, oh boy, how many times have I accidentally erased something in the background? The answer is a big number, I'm sure. So if I come up here with my eraser and I just start swiping across here and those are the ones I wanna get rid of, oops, I swiped across that base. Dang it, all right undo erase. And this doesn't have to just be for background. I'm using a, an item in the background as an example, but I could actually say, okay, I don't, I want to lock because I don't ever want to accidentally erase. And while I come over here and work on these cubes, these cylinders are perfect. So I'm going to lock them also. That way, if I come over here, I'm like, ah, I don't want to get any of these, 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 all these blocks should go away. I can't accidentally drag and erase these pieces because they're locked they won't go away at all. This is also huge when it comes to working with floor plans. Uh, I do this a lot too, so maybe I'll come in here and I'm gonna start, start drawing my walls. I'm just gonna grab a rectangle, I'm gonna put a rectangle right here, I'm gonna put a rectangle, oops, start right 
here, bring this down like this, and then I'll go from that corner up to here. And uh, what can pretty easily happen right here is as I'm going through, I'm drawing my geometry in, it is real, very, maybe it's just easier to do this than uh, other things because you always have this piece laying underneath. Um, but I will regularly erase my images. Or, like I said, failing that, I'll go, okay, I want to grab all these walls, except for this edge, because I want to stretch it out. And I'll go ahead and start moving it and go like, oh, oops, I grabbed that. So with images underneath, this is it's almost essential to select them and uh, lock them as well as uh, geometry that you're working on top of. Now, when you first go in, because images are imported, they're a unique item. They're an image. They're not standard uh, geometry. They act a little bit weird. So it's I'm, I'm pointing this out specifically because this is a little bit different. Images themselves can't be locked. You have to turn them into something else. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything I just created on here. And I want to put this image into its own group. To do that, the easiest way is to right click on an image, explode it, and then immediately right click and say make group. Once that's in its own group, now I can lock it. And again, when it's locked, if I come in here and I start drawing some, uh, some shapes over these, I assume these are Ottomans, I don't know. And now if I wanted to come in here and select them, I select them, but I can't accidentally move or manipulate that image behind because it again is locked. Something else you should note, just because something is locked, so over here I come over and this, I have this locked piece, I can still do things like that is on the base layer or tag. So I can still toggle that off. Same with these items. These items, even though they're locked, uh, I can still toggle items on and off. It doesn't affect visibility, but it does make it so that you can't accidentally erase, you can't manipulate, and you can't double click to edit those groups. You can see, in fact, if you right click, edit group is grayed out until you unlock, and then you can come in, edit the group, or double click if you need to. So that's about everything I can think of when it comes to locking geometry. Uh, like I said, it it is a tool that you're going to want to use because especially when you're like, I remember when I was first using SketchUp, I did it all the time where I'd zoom in to work on some details and forget about the fact that that surface that was the back of my screen was actually geometry that I could manipulate. Or that when I did a group select, I was selecting through the model and getting geometry on the back side of the model and manipulating it. Locking prevents that from happening. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos every week, one of them being a square one, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment down below. Most, if not all, of our content nowadays is created based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.